welcome to Your Mac Life for Wednesday, July 15th, the middle of July, the middle of summer 2020. This is show number 1262. I am your host, Sean King, joined by my half naked wife, Melissa King. <laughs> Hi. I'm not. It's hot. I know. It's, it's very funny. We've had a shitty June, a shitty July. Very. And this is probably the first really warm day, and she gets naked. <laughs> I no, I don't. We were wearing parkas up till yesterday. <laughs> we had the heat on last week. <laughs> as soon as it gets above like six degrees, naked. Mm. <laughs> just takes everything off. She's not even wearing socks right now. Oh, no. <laughs> My friend Joe in the far north of Australia, she's all cold. Yeah. If it gets to 25 degrees Celsius, she's like, oh, it's so it's cold. Like, she like got to go to bed with her blankies. 72 Fahrenheit, and she's freezing down there in Australia. It's yeah. very funny. Yeah, it was 93 degrees, so it was, it was uh, that? upper 30s for Monty uh, oh, in, in, oh, that's, in Atlanta. That's, <clears throat> oh dear. <laughs> that's, that's warm. No, no, no. On tonight's show, we'll talk to our good friend Jim Darren of Loop at loopinsight.com. As always, uh, first of all, we'll talk about the, the Twitter hack. Uh, Apple and any number of other people verified Twitter accounts were compromised by somebody at Twitter screwing up. That's what it was. It, was. it wasn't Apple's fault. It wasn't Elon Musk's fault. It wasn't Bill Gates' fault. It wasn't Obama's fault. All the people, people had their accounts hacked. Somebody at Twitter screwed up. So we'll talk to Jim about that. We're also going to talk about Apple Silicon. The new ARM-based Apple Silicon uh, uh, chips are coming out sometime starting uh, before the end of this year and then rolling out over the next two to three years. Should you wait to buy a new Mac? Maybe. Maybe not. We'll talk about that. Let's talk about how will this affect Windows PCs. Jean-Louis Gasset, uh, formerly of Apple in the Macintosh development team over there, had some words to say about how this is going to drastically affect Windows PCs. How is that possible? We'll talk to Jim about that. And in our starting point photography segment, we're going to talk about photographing Comet Neowise. Uh, last night, uh, I snuck out of the house around, what was the time, around 10, 30, 11 o'clock? Mm -hmm. It just started getting fairly dark. I didn't want to get anyone's hopes up, so I went out on, on my own to, to, to check to make sure. Took my, 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 my binoculars, my dad's old old binoculars, and used an app called, what did I use? I used Star something 3D. I forget what it was. And it showed me where in the sky I should be looking now. For us, north is directly that way. So you're supposed to be looking northwest a little bit. But there's a big mountain right there called uh, Elphinstone. And I was worried that Comet Neowise wouldn't be far enough above our horizon. It might be far enough above the plane of the Earth, but not enough of the horizon. So I don't want to get anyone excited by saying, hey, come see the comet. Oh, mountain in the way. So I went out, used the, used the app, held the app up in the sky, and said, it's over here. I was like, okay, it should be right there. Lifted up binoculars, and there it was. This teeny, tiny, itty-bitty little speck with the tail. That was that's, that's how I knew it was, it was the tail. I was like, oh my god, I can see it! I can see it! It was so cool. I stood there for about five, ten minutes waiting for it to get a little, little bit darker. And I came in and got Rory, and then I came in, and we came in and got Melissa, and we went outside and watched and looked at this amazing sight. It's not very clear with a pair of fifty-year-old binoculars. You can barely, barely make it out with the naked eye if you concentrate. But what was your first impression when you saw it? Oh, I felt breathless. Yeah. Just it really was my first view when I realized what it was. I went, <gasps> it really took my breath away. It, is. it was like, kind of cool. It's freaking amazing. Just and just kept looking at yeah. it, and it's an incredible thing. It just puts into perspective how little and insignificant we are. The closest it will come to Earth will be on July 22nd, 23rd, the evening of. Most of us in the northern hemisphere should be able to see it with the right light conditions. Now, a lot of you folks, if you live in big cities, uh, you probably won't be able to see it if you are in like, downtown, as uh, Monty lives near Atlanta. If you're in a major city, Vancouver, Toronto, Van Atlanta, New York, you'll have to get outside the city to a certain degree. Now, there are places where you can go to check that. And I found a website that I'm going to talk to you guys about. Did, uh, I lost it. Where'd it go? Come back. Come back. Where is it? Where is it? Are you kidding me? Where is it? Oh, there we go. It's called... Um, lightpollutionmap.info and I'm going to cover up Melissa's face my apologies my darling for, for doing this no worries um, but so for example you can see 
this is where we are here in that little, um, I'll zoom in so you can see it. The little pin in the map is Gibson's British Columbia. So we're in the yellow zone. So in the yellow zone, we could see it very clearly. We could see uh, the comet. It wasn't sharp, mostly because, because of the binoculars. But if you're in that purple zone there in the center of Vancouver, you're probably not going to see anything. But you can see if we went a little further away from that red dot in the middle, we could get to places that are fairly dark, fairly easily. Mm -hmm. And that's true of a lot of places. If, if you uh, go to lightpollutionmap.info and put in your own address, uh, we, I just put in the, the, the town of Gibson's, you'll be able to see where the light sources are around you. So, for example, for Monty, down there in Atlanta, Georgia, what did you use Monty as a an example? I can just tell already that's Atlanta <laughs> right there, that giant blob. So we'll bring it up for for Monty. And Monty is in DeKalb. I think he's up here near Gainesville or Athens, this area. So if you made the effort to drive to some other, but look how much light pollution there is in this area of the United States. Mm. It's really hard to get Very someplace that's, that's truly dark. I mean, this, this Atlanta stretches out all the way down to, you know, all these places. But if you, if you can manage it, um, even with, like I said, just a, uh, the binoculars I used were my dad's old binoculars from when he was in the Navy 50 years ago. So uh, we could see it then. Better binoculars or a better telescope would Dave's work a lot. Dave's asking for the link for that, please. Link for that. Oh, I will give you that to Dave. I will not. Um, not it, we're very lucky here because we can just go. I mean, one lady on on Facebook today, people were saying, where could I? Someone had mo mobility issues and they wanted to say, you know, where could I go just to get out and go for a little stroll from my car and she said the iga parking lot that's she said right. it was a beautiful view because it's you know the light pollution is almost you know it's very low <laughs> that's right. iga parking lot in gibson's for us there's that we don't have to go too far we don't we could go down to uh one of the local beaches and there'll probably be gatherings there how exciting how exciting but yeah definitely if so what we're going to do is talk about tonight on the starting point photography segment is how you can take pictures of it take your own pictures I'll tell you right now, unless you get some really good gear, your pictures won't be great, but at least you'll have a picture. Of this <laughs> Dave's going to move to Northern Ontario. <laughs> no, you're not. No, dude, I'm no. telling you, no. you're not moving you to Northern to Ontario. To Ontario. <laughs> yeah. Find some place dark it's in Minnesota. Move to Northern BC, and even then I would... Yeah. Still iffy. <laughs> anywhere anywhere north of like 100 miles of the Canadian U.S. border, it's getting sketchy. All right? Well, trust us. All right? It's just, it just, <laughs> just worrisome, to say the least. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about the uh, kind of stuff you'll need, the settings. You're not, I'll tell you this right now, you're <clears throat> probably not going to get that shot on an iPhone. That's mm -hmm. just a little hint. So unless you have a, a DSLR of some sort, uh, I wouldn't bother trying with an iPhone. Um, Everybody, I just want to uh, just very quickly congratulate my husband. What the hell are He you has now? lost... Probably over 10 pounds now, and we're seeing it. He has lost over 10 pounds. Two weeks ago, Melissa said, hey, let's try this keto diet. Now, is that, uh, what's a keto diet? Well, you can't have potatoes or rice or cake bread. or bread or pasta. or I'm like, okay, fine, I'll try it. Or Kit Kats. Or Kit Kats. And two weeks later, I've lost 10 pounds, with literally without even trying. Yeah. And only starving myself mildly. Well, he's very um, diligent in in following it, and it suits Sean. You know, he gets his cheeses and he loves his cream. He loves his meat, yep. and he makes delicious recipes. And uh, you know, some things are a flop. We had cream cheese, <laughs> uh, cream cheese, coconut cream cheese flour pancakes, pancakes on Blah. Sunday morning. It was like, Blah. and I made chocolate chip ones for the boys, and we're drooling over it. Over the boys' it's, plates. We started off using an app called Carb Manager, but the app's UI was just awful, so we stopped. But it's fairly easy because all you do is look at the packaging of stuff and yeah. see how many carbs it is. Like the, we, we were having a, a snack this afternoon, and we got uh, uh, crackers out for Rory. And we looked at the crackers. Eight crackers are 15 grams and 11 grams of carbs. Nope, put it away. Yeah, you realize. Don't need a carb manager with that. crackers, I'm fine. Yeah, exactly. But it's a lot of carbs. The funniest thing is... Um, conceptually for me is the idea that you can have as much fat as you want. You know, you can eat cheese and you can eat, you can have dairy. Can we have dairy? 
Yeah, um, uh, creams. Cream. Yeah, we can have cream and um, coffee. Cheese. Cheese. Shitloads of cheese. Like, but it's basically what it's supposed to be is it puts your body into a state of ketosis, which is burning your own body fat for energy. That's what that's what your body fat's for. It's for energy. That's why your body stores it. And that's how you lose weight because your your ketosis is burning off your body fat. But logically, it to me it says, well, you shouldn't put more fat in your body. <laughs> you know? No, but you're not putting in all those sugars and starches. And and that's part of it too is that because of that, we've cut back on a lot of processed food. Yeah. Uh, and for me in particular, the snacks. It, I don't. I love my snacks. I love my Kit Kat bars in the evenings. But you know, you have two decent sized Kit Kat bars seven nights a week. You're not going to lose weight. No, you're not. Um, not if you're not active. That's right. And that's it. That's the other thing yeah. too. Is I'm yeah. so sedentary. Yeah. But the other thing is too, paying attention to paying again, paying attention to what you eat. Yeah. Um, we're not having beers anymore. I'll have maybe one beer every couple of weeks. We're having vodka tonics. No, and we're having vodka. Uh, no, Dave. Or, as Melissa made me last night, a oh, vodka. A vodka. <laughs> <laughs> last night, Melissa. Yeah, honey, you want to share this with me? <laughs> I forgot to put the tonic. I thought, I thought last, it was okay. Last night, she said, you, you want me to make you a vodka tonic? I said, like, yes, that'd be fine. She said, I'll use the mix that's in the fridge. <laughs> yes, that'd be fine. They so pre-mixed up a whole bunch of the vodka and lime juice. So she hands me this glass of ice in it. I take a big slug and like, Jesus. She said, something wrong? I said, this is straight vodka. <laughs> With lime. I said, did I forget something? She said, did I forget something? The tonic. <laughs> <laughs> so you can, but no beer, you're right. But you know what, Dave? Um, Sean's lost this 10 pounds or perhaps more by now. And every now and again, if it's a, we've been working in the yard or he, we bought a barbecue yep. and he wanted to have a beer with his first yes, barbecue experience right. cooking. And, and then you just do that and you go, okay. And that's I had a beer, and then you just keep moving forward with your diet. And with the your thing eating. is, the thing is, for you and I, I don't know about anyone else, but for you and I, we don't drink a lot anyway. Mm -mm. You know, I've we've had no. I've had a case of Keese in the fridge now for probably two months. Oh yes, no, we're not drinkers. You know, so we, that's... We, we just we just are no longer uh, three or four beer a night or even a week for us. We'll yeah. have one. Yeah. We'll share a beer once every two weeks. Yeah. So that wasn't a hard thing to cut back on. Oh, not Cutting at back all. On, not at on all. Beer. No, I think um, I've probably I've lost about four pounds. Yeah. Three, th three, four, three, four. <laughs> but for me, the the biggest thing is the potatoes, the rice, the pasta, the snacks, the bread, that kind of stuff. That's just common sense. Yes. But that kind of stuff is starchy and filling and, yeah. and fat. But and you'll probably find so when you've on to if you want to lose another ten pounds. You'll lose another 10, and then one night you might decide to have a nice bowl of pasta. And yes, it will be lovely, but you'll feel, you'll feel that kind of, mm, that my body feels different having all those carbs inside. I would me. disagree. It won't, oh, you. No, I think I'm going to just. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, God. Uh, okay. We finally got the barbecue put together. No thanks to the asshats at Dynaglow who sent us a wrong panel. That four things hang off of. So there's four things on the barbecue that aren't attached, including the very top part of it. But it's close enough. But assholes. Um, and so yeah, now I'm grilling. I'm. I'm We're actually, having barbecue every night. Yeah. Last night was exquisite. Yes. He nailed it. Moroccan chicken and roasted vegetables. Mm -hmm. And the boys are loving it. So basically, I have to learn to manage heat more than mm -hmm. I do in an oven or on a yeah on a uh, uh, stove. Yeah, that's all it is. Is not learning where the, how much heat the burners do and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easy and it's fun. It's, it's your fun outside. to be outside. And the we're thing, having the, beautiful Mediterranean salads. Yeah, and true. we're going to get fish soon to put on the barbecue. We haven't done fish yet, yep. which shouldn't take very long at yeah, all. And, and once we get rid of the boys, we're going <clears> to <throat> have barbecued ribs. We're not getting rid of Damon, just Rory. For well, Damon can't be here for them. There's not enough ribs for three people. Oh There's goodness. barely. You'll be lucky if you get any ribs. You. Uh, yes, I'll be getting ribs. You just make Damon a burger to accompany his, and he'll get a few ribs. We're also drinking the sparkling ice. Yes. It has nothing is, in it. It's freaking us out. It's actually technically should be an empty bottle. It's, <laughs> it's literally got nothing in it. There's no calories. There's no fats. There's no cholesterol. There's no sodium. Sorry. There's, there's 10 milligrams of sodium. Mm. No carbs. No fiber. No sugars. No protein. No vitamins. No vitamins. A, C, calcium, no iron. iron. There's nothing in No. 
How just does, salt. How does this taste so good? It is so yummy. So you could put your vodka in this if you wanted. <laughs> or if you like my vodka, the way I have it with nothing. Oh, it's dear. 546. Macman says, I'm down 10 since I started trying to work out more. Good for you, Macman. Oh, good, Macman. Good. Yeah. It's not easy. It's definitely not easy. But No, um, you get into these habits, right? Going. And they're comfort things. Yes, Melissa's right is 1046, so I'm going to uh, give Jim Dalrymple a call, and we'll get him on the show in a few moments. And then later on, we're going to talk to, we're going to do our starting point photography segment on taking photographs of Comet Neowise, all that and much more coming up right after this. This is your Mac Life. Welcome back, folks. Thank you guys very much for joining us here this Wednesday. Evening. Hello. It, 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 yes, Jim, hang on. Let me oh, do, okay, okay. I, I'm oh, doing the introduction sorry. for you. Just all right. Chill. All right. All right. All right. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us here this Wednesday evening on our phone. We have the very excited Jim Downfall of the Loop at loopinsight.com. Jim, how you doing? Well. Uh-oh. So, normally, Wednesday night is Erica's cooking night. Okay. Be- because I do the podcast. And I, I usually I start drinking about 9 a.m. About, <laughs> but like 9 a.m. 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So I can't cook on Wednesday night because she cooked. Sure. But she went to visit her dad because her dad wasn't feeling well. So, um, so she's down there uh with bill now and he is just an amazing guy so i can't be mad at bill you know of course but i i don't know what so i'm gonna start throwing logs and squirrels out back so i can eat <laughs> not a lot of meat in a squirrel though well that, there's a lot of them here though i ah. mean they since erica left they've been taking over the place I got it. They, they they tried to carry me away last night speaking of uh, getting carried away you, you were in lake tahoe over the weekend I was. What, what? Okay. At some point, we have to have a conversation with Erica because she's changing you as a as a as a man. She's she's she's. You've gone from this down home, down to earth kind of guy to this snotty Lake Tahoe boat riding person. What the hell? You're you're vacationing well, in Mexico in condos. You're. I just it's just disturbing, dude. Well, Erica wasn't there. To be clear. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. Whoa. whoa, whoa. <laughs> Backstory. So, so, so I got to tell you, I I did go to Lake Tahoe last weekend, and I I brought my speedo and a muscle. Ah, oh, Jesus! A little yeah. throw up at the back of my throat there. Oh, God. yeah. And I'll I'll tell you, I I had the women in the tizzy up in Tahoe. 
they were in a tizzy. That's the only word that I can I can <laughs> describe it. <laughs> They were in a tizzy with my muscle shirt and my speedo. By, by the now way, I, folks, for Canadians, tizzy means violently ill. No, 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 no. They, I mean, I had to beat them off with a stick. Oh, I had to, I was like a beachcomber. I had to go out and get, get a stick and beat them off. with. I'm surprised they even made it back alive from there. I don't think I've ever met someone so delusional as you. Well, that's the way I saw it. <laughs> Okay, so where was Erica? Uh, no, she was home. So a friend of mine uh, has this place up in Tahoe that he calls a cabin that's basically a mansion. <laughs> um, and I went up there for the for the weekend. And what and, do you do in Lake Tahoe? Well, apparently they like to do this thing. Well, okay, so he has this uh, this little boat that you saw the picture of me on. Which is not a little boat. It's like, you know, you could be on Miami Vice with this. It boat. looked like a twenty-five foot bay, bay craft or something like that. I don't know. It was it was a very fast. Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't know what a bay craft is either. I don't know what his is. <laughs> Bayliner, sorry. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know what any of that stuff was, but I I did have a few cocktails. <laughs> and, and by cocktails, you mean Heineken? Because you never had a cocktail in your life. Well, no, I did before I used to fight a lot with it. So now I just have Heineken. But yes, I did have a few Heineken. Good. Over the weekend. And uh, I guess that's it. We're done. So so that was it? You just went out there and sat in a boat and drank beer? Well, no, we had a barbecue. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Yeah. No, I meant you and I are done. That's the show, right? <laughs> We, we 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 talked we talked about Bill and how much I love that man. We talked about uh, Tahoe, and we talked about the fact that I'm going to have to kill squirrels to eat tonight. Well, you're going to have to also talk about uh, the fact that your your Twitter your Twitter account was one of the many that was hacked today because I saw a picture of you without a Heineken in your hand. Obviously, a fake picture. Obviously. What do you what do you think about this? This is uh, to me this is a funny story. I'm probably because I wasn't affected, but uh, to me it was funny in so many ways. I saw the Apple account tweet before they got before they deleted it, before it got pulled, yeah. and my first thought was, who is this stupid? You know, I mean, <laughs> who is dumb enough to think that someone could say whether it was Apple <laughs> or Elon Musk or Jeff B. I don't fucking care who it is. Hey, if you send me a thousand dollars, I'll send you two thousand dollars back. Who is well, that uh, stupid? Uh, apparently, they made one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh my god! You know, if I were them, I I just uh, I, what does Trump have like two billion followers or something? I just would have done Trump's account. Jesus Christ! Because those people, those people would have sent him money. That's just it's just bizarre that people could get could fall for such a blatantly stupid scam. Yeah. That someone's smart but, enough to figure out Bitcoin, but too stupid to realize that this is a scam. Yeah. Well, it happens. So is this an embarrassment for Apple, Elon Musk, Obama, no, et cetera? Th no, th this happened in Twitter. Yeah. Then this has nothing to do at all with Obama, with um with Apple, with Elon Musk. This is an embarrassment for Twitter yep. that somebody was able to take over these accounts and, you know, post this and make, you know, 110 <laughs> grand. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's probably more. That's, yep. you know, uh, uh, well, the, well, by the time. Well, the thing is with Bitcoin, the transactions are public. So you can count up how much money was gathered by this. Account. No, no, I'm saying the the time wise, it's probably more. Yeah, but you know, I would have just said, you know what, send me cash. Here's my bank account. You know? <laughs> I mean, do you want to admit that you actually fell for this? Uh, as I said on 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 Twitter, um, Twitter is going to send out an explanation probably later this evening. I'll tell you right now that first explanation will be a lie because that's Twitter. The first thing they say will be completely full of shit. And then we'll yep. find out like next Monday that someone got fired over it. Some tech guy pushed the wrong button or somebody was social engineered to give up this information to um, somebody. Like so all the Twitter accounts? Well, someone had a key to 
to these Twitter accounts. This wasn't a bunch of individual hacks. This was one person. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, no, it was it was one hack in Twitter. Yes. And they picked the accounts they wanted to put this out on. Yeah, that's right. So someone that's got, what I said. I, I, I don't know why they didn't just pick Trump's. Because I, I think, you know what, I don't know if they're this smart, but one aspect of that is that that could be considered an attack on the president, which holds a lot more penalties, stiffer penalties than um, just a regular everyday hack on Apple. You know what I mean? Well, then they, they should have picked Dell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Because you can't be too smart if you pick a Dell in the first yeah, place. Yeah, fair, so, fair, oh, fair yeah. enough. Let, let me let me empty out my Bitcoin account and, and uh, give it to you. Here's all my money. Well, you were bragging about the fact that you were um, the one behind this, but we all know that's not true because you're not smart enough to figure out Bitcoin. I I just I would you you would know if it was me because I would have went Samsung and Dell and just left it at that. <laughs> exactly. Um, is this worth? Should this be a a big concern for Twitter that this happened? Does this yes. does this show off the lack of security at Twitter, yes. inside Twitter, of Twitter? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is definitely not a good look for them. I mean, this is a huge embarrassment. So, from this wasn't me getting my account hacked. This was Apple and Gates and Bezos. This is right. millions upon millions so, of people saw these tweets. Yeah. So the, the, to be clear, this isn't a situation where. Uh, you know, uh, somebody got uh, through through the what do they call that? The social networking um, hacking, where you know they social, call, social engineering. They do all, social engineering. This isn't that. Yeah. They actually hacked into to Twitter on this, so this is a big deal for Twitter. Okay, now now have you heard that that they've hacked into Twitter on this, or that it was social engin- engineering? Because I'm assuming it was social engineering, but I don't know one way or another. No, how could how could you social engineer all of those accounts? That's not going to happen. Because one guy had the key to this, and he was the one that got social engineered. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think I think Twitter is responsible for no matter how many people they fire. <laughs> this is on Twitter. Oh yeah, this is definitely on Twitter. Uh, but I don't care. I, d- I don't care how many engineers you fire and then, you know, rehire in the background. But no, this is Twitter. That's what I think. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what kind of da- long term damage it's going to be from a platform that's already got a shitload of problems. There's another one of those damn squirrels. <laughs> I think I think they're starting to surround me here. Oh, dear. Yeah. What again? You called me. I did not call you. Sorry, uh, my uh, my uh, feed crashed as we were as we were speaking. Um, so, see? so what? See see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You just hacked YouTube. <laughs> Behold the power of Grayskull. <laughs> Wasn't that wasn't that Tarzan? That was He Man. Oh, come on, dude. Herc, Herc, it's devilish, devilish. Oh no! Don't even start with that one. <laughs> don't even start with that Herc, Herc one. Oh my God, I hated that cartoon. God, I hated that cartoon. That was awful. Hey, we only have one channel, one TV channel. People complain now because they have three hundred channels to watch. We have one TV yeah. channel, and that was the cartoon that was on. Yeah, that's right. So tortured being a kid yeah um so yeah i don't think there there, there will be no long-term damage or embarrassment from um any of the people who were hacked this is all going to be on twitter this is all they're going to be them to explain it i don't know that it will have any long-term effect on a platform that's already got a shitload of problems you know you know what i mean so let me ask you this because it was twitter that was hacked could those people that lost their money sue twitter yes they could i doubt that they would because then they'd have to stand up in court and go i'm an idiot well depends on how much you gave isn't it Mm, true yeah absolutely true 
Yeah, regardless, it's 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 an embarrassment for for Twitter that that I think they'll they'll surf through because they've had so many other embarrassments. I mean, realistically, this is I mean they've got Trump as a major embarrassment. They got Nazis all over the place. They've got incels. They've got so many other issues that I think this yeah. is a fairly minor one once they explain it and say hey, everything's everything's hacked, everything's locked down now. So everything's hacked now. Yeah, that's basically now. right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You're, you're all screwed. Go away. Let's move on. Uh, the other a bit of news. Uh, it seemed like this came all at the same time. Last, I think earlier this week or late last week, uh, Apple uh, was offering one month free trial uh, for, of News Plus for those who hadn't, who had subscribed to News Plus, but didn't, uh, had a free trial of News Plus, but didn't subscribe. Today we hear are, that. Are that, you drunk? I know it feels like it doesn't. I'm, no, I'm still trying Good to deal God. with. I'm still trying to deal with the the stream has gone down, and I'm trying to uh, uh, get it to come up while I'm having it. All right, do you want to take? You. Do you want to take a little break? And, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. And get that up. And Apple partnered with Verizon to offer free six months of News Plus for new iPad buyers. Um, Best Buy is offering a deal for. Um, but those are all. Those are people that hadn't taken advantage of that before. No, oh, no, no. What I'm saying is, my, my point is that it, it's there's a push now from Apple. Uh, the new version of iOS has uh, Apple Audio News now. They've got an Apple News Daily. Uh, they're not calling it a podcast, but they're uh, the, the daily news is being read. So it seems like they're doing something to try to juice Apple News Plus subscribers. Will it work? No. Why not? Because I'm basically getting read the news I don't want to read. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly where I thought about it. I don't want to read this shit. Why do I want to hear it? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I And, I mean, there may be people out there that really enjoy Apple News Plus and paying uh, 10 bucks a month for that. I'm just not one of them. Um, you know, the magazines that they have in Apple News Plus are not of interest yep. to me. Um, I have subscriptions to, I think, work-wise, what I need with Wall Street Journal and the New York Times. Yep. Um, so you're going to read it to me now, which, you know, maybe might be a bit better, but I... I Overall, I'm looking for content. I don't mind reading the content no. as long as the content is good. And I think Apple News, actually, Apple News is a hundred times better than Apple News Plus. Yeah. Okay. To me. Um, and, you know, I'll go through and I'll read. And I know now that, like, the Los Angeles Times is an Apple News Plus thing. So when they have that, and the San Francisco Chronicle. So when they have that listed in my Apple News feed, I just don't click on it. Yeah. I don't tap on those ones because uh, I know that I can't read them. Um, I, I just, you know, if they had a group of publications that were really good, but how many publications do we really rely on? I mean, what is the gold standard? You know, I mean, I think Apple will get its fair share of new subscribers because of this stuff, but they will not hang around. Um, people who are casual uh, news readers don't necessarily want to spend five bucks to read that stuff. People who are news junkies want more than what Apple News Plus is going to provide. Certainly, more customization, if nothing else. That's something we've talked about the entire time. I am a complete news junkie. I will spend six hours a day reading news and various topics. I, I read constantly. And I thought Apple News Plus would be a good way for me to get that information. It's not. Yeah. It is not. It is not customizable. It is not configurable in a way that lets me be efficient reading a lot of news all at once. The only thing it does that right now is RSS readers or Feedly is the one I use. So they haven't done enough in the app to make it worth the while. I think of the vast majority of people who even try it out for a month or so. It's the app. It's not the news itself. I don't see as being the problem. I think it's the app, the inconsistency of the user interface, the inconsistency of 
Some of these magazines are just basically PDFs. Others are scroll left. Some are scroll up. Some are scroll down. It's yeah, just, it's yeah, all that's, confusing that's as hell. Yeah. And so when you get that much that much confusion, uh, users who aren't news junkies just go, well, screw it. I'm just, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get rid of this thing. And why you know why pay ten bucks a month for this? That's the thing I'm surprised about with Apple is that they haven't said. Oh, you know what? For a special offer, we're going to offer this for five dollars a month, because then that might bring in more people. But ten bucks a month just doesn't feel like the right price, does it? No. It, well, to me, it doesn't, because yeah. I mean, I have subscriptions to a whole lot of stuff, but yet I still canceled that one. Yeah. You know, so it I I wasn't getting ten bucks a month yep. worth out of that. I had a um, so. I- interesting discussion with someone today on on Twitter who who firmly believes that Apple is going to change the entire news industry, and I cannot see that happening in any way, shape, or form. And there's no way Apple can make significant amounts of money off of news, and it's to me it's not in their wheelhouse to disrupt the news business. Well, I don't know. It's in Apple's wheelhouse to disrupt any kind of business if they want to but, yes but um whether they can do that with apple news i mean they've tried this before with the i mean if they were going to do it and you put apple together with rupert murdoch and what was that uh, magazine called the daily the daily yes uh, a few years back you would think if they were going to disrupt anything it would have been with that yep because then you're bringing two titans one of news and one of of um, a tech and that should have, if anything was going to do it, that should have done it. And it didn't, it It failed. Um, So, you know, I tried it out and, you know, is, is, was that any better or worse than the New York times or the wall street journal? Probably not, but I don't know. I mean, it's frustrating if for no other reason than you, this is another example of, of we want Apple to be good at this stuff. We're not knocking them just because we're Android fanboys and, and want to knock them for the sake of knocking them. We want them to be good at this stuff. And they're just right now. Oh, we're not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but this is just doesn't seem to be a thing that, that, you know what? I would like to see Apple turn the entire Apple News, Apple News Plus over to, re, air, air quotes, Real news people, not bean counters, not business people, not coders, but real journalists, real people who run news organizations and see if they can do something better with it. No, I I think you're making a big assumption here that Apple doesn't have journalists on staff that that look at this stuff. But there's only so much that they can do. And that's that's where I think Apple News comes in, which I really enjoy. I think that that's put together by actual news people uh, that, you know, Apple has on staff that makes Apple news, you know, your, your top stories, depending on, you know, your algorithm and, and what they recommend and all of this kind of stuff that goes into it. That's where I think that, that Apple actually makes a big difference. But with Apple news plus, there's only so much you can do. You have these magazines that, I, I think for the most part, um, and maybe I'm wrong, but for the most part are failing yeah. be- because magazines are doing that these days. What is a journalist supposed to do with Apple News Plus? I just don't see how uh, anybody can make that work. Yeah. I really don't. I'm surprised. I, I I firmly believe that what's going to happen is the same thing that happens with a lot of Apple tech that someone at Apple loses interest in. That in two years this will quietly die. This will be another aperture, yeah. or this will be another QuickTime broadcaster, would... or you know those things where yeah. where someone got all gung ho at the beginning and then they they got distracted or they got moved to a different department or whatever it might be, and this will die a, a slow death in 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 two years. Well, newsstand, news, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. You know. You know, newsstand went away. I mean, Apple has had many kicks at the cans no. here. And it's, I I do not think in, in any stretch of the imagination here 
that the failure of Apple Plus is Apple's fault. I, I'm really I don't blame Apple for for that. No. The 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 free service that they offer with Apple News is so much better than Apple News Plus. Yeah, which is embarrassing. And uh, but there's only so much they can do. There's yeah. magazines that people just don't want to read anymore. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, a lot of it feels so, like shovelware. So maybe Apple News um, Plus is a different thing than just offering magazines that nobody wants to read. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know, but I, I, I kind of think that they have to look at this in a different way. I don't know if they can or if they will. I, I, I just right now I think that it's just something that they can't kill right now. It's too early, but I think that they will kill it eventually. I think they'll eventually realize, you know, this really isn't isn't worth our it isn't isn't worth our bother. No, it's it's not worth mine. We got uh, a comment. Um, uh, sorry, uh, a Monday's Monday's note. John Louis Gasset made an interesting comment about the, how. The transition from Intel to Apple Silicon is going to hugely affect Windows PCs. ZDNet's Ed Bot has said it's not going to affect affect them at all. It's going to be irrelevant. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, Gasse made some really interesting points. Ed Bot didn't. That's not to be unexpected from <laughs> Ed. <laughs> but but Gasse made an interesting point that, and I think Gasse is right on this. Basically, he said that. Apple's going to bring out machines that, if nothing else, in two years' time, are going to blow away what Apple had before under Intel and will likely blow away whatever Intel has at that point. Can you yeah. see Dell and Compaq and these other companies sticking with Intel when Apple can yeah. show that ARM-based machines work much, much faster? Will this force yes. Microsoft to redevelop or recommit to Windows for ARM? No. Why not? Because I I think it uh, what we're we're talking about here is selling something on a mass scale, and uh, will people that do photography or you know anything that is is computational heavy come over? Sure. Is somebody that wants to pay five hundred dollars for a computer going to come over? No. And in a lot of cases, that is the mass market yeah. and and there's no way that apple showing power is going to make any difference to those people they will continue to go buy their dell and you know have an intel chip that's in, inferior so you honestly think that this will this transition from intel to apple silicon will not affect windows pcs no, I didn't say that. Okay. It will. It will for anybody that needs um, any kind of power to do their work. And, you know, for, for companies that – any company, really, that that wants um, a power, they're going to now not even look at Intel. And I, I – that's – the, the fact that Apple's chips are better is already proven. I mean, the, the, the iPad is more powerful in a lot of cases than the Mac. Yep. You know, so when the Mac comes out with these things, it's going to be just insane. So, but if, if you're talking, is the Mac going to go up because of this? Yes, I believe it will. Um, but... Will people still buy Intel inferior Windows PCs? Yes, they will, because they have you know five hundred bucks to spend, or eight hundred bucks. Yeah. You're not going to get a Mac for that. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I, I predict that this is claim chatter in five to ten years. I think it'll take Apple four years to get the whole line. Um, over to Apple Silicon, get all whatever bugs are going to happen worked out. Those machines in four years will be amazing, fast, super duper machines. And I think that's when, if they haven't already, Microsoft's going to have to answer the call of users, whether they be 
um, average everyday users or power users saying, hey, those guys over there have got machines that are X percent faster than what's ru- what Windows is running on. Do something about it, or we're going to move over to those guys. Well, but I, I think that there's still a couple of things here. I mean, what are most people in offices doing uh, with their computers? Office. What are most users doing with their computers? Yeah, they're, I they're, mean, they're doing Microsoft uh, Office. Yeah. I, I, you know, most of these things can be done on the cheaper PCs. Yes. Now, you move into anything to do with a, a an amateur pro or pro category, yeah, they're going to kill it there. I mean, Intel might as well just get out of the business yeah. of that right now. Um, you know, music, photography, video, 3D, uh, all of that stuff. I mean, that's Apple owns that business. Yep. But if you're going to send an email or surf the web, well, you can get anything you want. Yeah, you can use a Chromebook for that. Yeah, exactly. Monty those and, people, those people don't care. Your buddy Monty in the IRC chat room says, uh, "Too much legacy Intel stuff at the corporate world. Microsoft doesn't really care about the general public consumers. They make all their money on server corporate licenses. That means the desktop PC world will follow along on inertia." Yep. No. Yeah. Right. Because that's all they need. You know, they're they're going to be sending emails. I. You know, it just it doesn't matter. Uh, the only time when when we ever hear about Windows really um, uh, coming up in some of these markets is when Apple abandons them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, so if Apple has the power to be able to do all of the things that pros want to be able to do, they're going to take a bigger percent of that that market. The other aspect of Apple Silicon that I've got heard from a lot of people, uh, Apple Insider had a really poorly written article about it today, basically telling people they should wait to buy a new Mac. Now, granted, the people at Apple Insider think that Apple's not going to have Silicon Apple Silicon Macs for two years, you idiots. Tim Cook said they were coming out before the end of this year. Well, what would that, that, it, I, I, I think that'll be a one one system. Maybe. Oh, yeah. No, it'll be, it'll be one system, but they are coming out this year. Someone comes up to you and says, I want to buy a new Mac. What do you tell them? I tell them the same thing. I tell them every single time somebody to ask me that. Yep. And I say, buy what you can afford yep. right now Yep. and be happy with it. If you need a machine because now, buy it now. Because whatever you buy right now is already out of date. And that doesn't mean a Mac. It means Windows. It means any company you can name. It's already out of date. So, so, so someone be asked, happy with what you get. So someone asked you, um, I want to buy, uh, I, I need to buy a new Mac laptop. And you say, well, buy one now. And, you, and the person says, but I've heard about these Apple Silicon chips. Shouldn't I wait for one of those? What's your response? You can wait if, uh, till the end of the year if you want. It's not going to be, um, you know, all systems. But if you want to wait, go ahead and wait. But I thought you said you needed one now. Yes. But I, but I don't want to be uh, obsoleted immediately. Well, you were obsolete immediately. <laughs> as soon as you paid for that, you were obsolete. <laughs> It doesn't matter if it's an iPhone, a computer, an Apple Watch, a Fitbit, a Samsung phone. No matter what you buy, you are obsolete the minute that credit card goes through. So, um, you know, I've always told people for the past 20 years, I've told people, buy what you can afford right now and be happy with what you buy. And go from there. What I've been telling folks is that even if you bought a new Intel-based Mac today, it's going to last you for four more years. Not yeah. only physically, but even with the operating system. Apple's going to support that operating system for at least four more years. Your machine will run fine. It will be just as fast today as it will be in four years. It'll be a good machine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Whatever work you need to do, you can do on that machine. The only difference 
is your resale value in four years will be shit. <laughs> You're not going to be able to resale. That. The resale value is just forget about it. There's going to be nothing. But if you need the machine today, the machine you buy today is going to be a great machine for at least four more years. If you don't need to buy today, you might as well wait till the next version of whatever it is you want to get, whether it be a MacBook right. Air or an iMac. You might as well wait. But, but you know what? As soon as you wait, there's going to be something else sure. you want. Yeah, wait, and and wait. soon you're going to be five years out and you're going to be writing things on a piece of pen and paper. <laughs> yeah, you know, got, I mean, my, my iMac is now six years old. <clears throat> when the next iMac comes out, I won't buy one because I don't have the money for it. But if, <laughs> if I had the money to buy uh, the next iMac, I'd buy the next iMac no matter what kind of iMac it is. If Apple, re yeah. Apple released before Christmas a new 27-inch Intel-based iMac that fit my, my specs, I'd buy it. I wouldn't wait for the Apple Silicon iMac because I know Apple's going to support this thing for another at least four years. I don't disagree with you. I mean, you know, just be happy with what you have. You cannot continue to to wait around. It's like, you know, you got a car with uh, with three wheels falling off of it, and you need a new one. What do you do? Oh, yeah. I really want that one that's coming out next year. Well, okay. Can you wait till next year? <laughs> that's right. You know, I, I yeah. There was a, a really um, just odd uh, event this past week with that, that that Tim Cook was involved with. This whole um, idea of basically Ivanka Trump telling people go find a new job, uh, right? With with uh, Trump with uh, uh, Tim Cook saying, "I may saying, do that. <laughs> I may become a bulldozer driver. <laughs> I want to be a lion tamer." <laughs> Where can I get training for that, Ivanka? <laughs> it really uh, is the most tone deaf thing I've heard in a long time. Hey, in the middle of the really pandemic, was. you've been laid off. There's 28 million Americans unemployed. Go find a new skill set. <laughs> you, you 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 don't have money for food That's or right. healthcare. Rent, nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah, not uh, but go find a new job. White House's tone deaf ad asks unemployed Americans to just find another job. <laughs> yeah. Get those numbers back up. And that's right. It when I first heard it this morning, I sort of literally went, No, that's that's a spoof. That they, they can't actually be seriously talking about this way. And then I saw Tim Cook's name involved. And I, went, uh, I saw I saw that last night before I went to bed and you know, I, I actually had to sit down for a minute. Yeah, it's, again, we've talked about this in, in the past. Cook, with this odd relationship he seems to want to cultivate with this administration, which quite often doesn't bite him in the ass, but in my opinion, and correct me if, if you think I'm wrong, it makes him look bad. There's no need for him to get involved in this thing. Now, he has said in the past that engagement is important to him and that it's better to have a seat at the table than be standing outside. But this is not a table he really wants to be at, is it? Well, look, I I get that. Look, I, So, first of all, I believe that Tim wants to do good. Yes, I agree I with that. I really, really, really do. Um. And having a seat at the table and having your voice heard is a good thing. But when you let the court jesters out to speak, yeah. um, it, I I can't imagine that that was Tim's voice yeah. um, saying that. So my only question here is how much of you know, the corporate leaders' voices were actually being heard here. And is that – because if that was Tim's voice, oof. Yeah. That's bad. I don't believe it was, but because Tim is not that uh, tone deaf. He's proven that in the past. Sure. But, you know, you're part of this. So I, I just – Yeah. Not a good thing. It's it just feels like it's something that that he can get involved in, but not so directly, not arm in arm with Ivanka Trump, with the whole Trump family, with this administration, who have 
espoused views, both personally and governmentally, that are antithetical to what we know Tim Cook believes in. That's where I really find the problem I have with this, is that these people, we know what we know about Tim Cook. We know that he would never sit down and have a beer with Donald Trump. You know Tim Cook hates Donald Trump with a blinding passion. But Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, feels he needs to work with the administration, and I get that. Of course he does. But of course he does. it still bothers me that he is willing to subsume his principles for this seat at the table. He can have he can no. have a voice without sitting at the table. He doesn't have to subsume his principles and still be in support of I, Apple. Uh, see, I I don't think that it's gone that far. No. Um, it, no, I don't because if Tim was sitting at that table announcing this initiative, that would be a different thing. Yeah. You know, so I I think that we can all agree that Tim probably facepalmed at this thing as much as the rest of us did. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right? So Tim having a seat at the table is a good thing for all of us because I, I think that he actually cares. Yep. And and some of the others too. You know, we, we talk about Tim because it's Apple, but I he's not the only one that has some uh some feelings. And <clears throat> If he was actually the one that was sitting at the table saying this, like speaking it, and, you know, this is what I want you to do, go find a job as a gold digger now, um, uh, you know, then that would be different. But well, he was directly, I, I don't think we're I don't think we're there yet. But he was directly involved in this announcement. He was there in the Zoom meeting virtually sitting next to Ivanka Trump. As she made these these announcements of find something new, go find a new job, you know, it, it's he was there. He was in the same shot as she was. He didn't have to be there for that. That's I, that, that's I, I, my I, point. Is, is him being in the same shot as these people makes him look bad. Well, I, I mean that's hard to disagree with. Yeah, I just. It, 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 there are ways of him doing this, and this is obviously my opinion, there are ways of him doing this without having to be arm-in-arm arm with the administration. He, They could have made this announcement in in Washington, and Tim could have come up with a press release afterwards and said, we support this, we want to help people learn to code, that kind of stuff, which I think is stupid anyway. But you know what I mean? There was a way of him doing this without being right there in the picture. That may not make a difference, but it. Uh, I mean, Sean, you. This is so tough. It really is. It's so tough. It really is. But it's a lot easier when you have principles to stand on. Well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I don't even know what you want me to say to no, this no. because it's just so so tough. No, those are the best I, conversations we had. Ones where you can't talk. I. I, I agree. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I, I, I agree that, you know, Tim needs a seat at the table, and so did some of these other people. But how much do you really – I mean, Fauci has a seat at the table, yeah. too. Yeah, well, no, he doesn't. Look how he's that's been, going for he's him. Been, he's been kicked off of the kiddies' table. Mm. But yet, we say again – Tell somebody in, you know, Germany or Canada, wear a face mask or you're going to die. Yep. Okay. Okay. Not a problem. Putting it on now, sir. Tell, tell somebody in America, you know, in, in Florida that, and they go out and have a party and invite people infected with COVID so that you can get COVID too. Speaking of which, how was it at Tahoe? Um, so, Ma mask wearing wise. Oh, very good. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I always have my mask. Uh, I, so if I'm in a place like Tahoe, um, I have my mask in my back pocket. <laughs> and what? No, seriously. The mask is my useless mask. with you. No, 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 no. I mean, when I'm if I'm if I'm driving and I stop somewhere, I always have my mask with me. And when I'm at home, um, I always have my mask in the console of of my car. 
so that if I'm going shopping or whatever, I always have my mask on as soon as I get out of the car and um, right till when I come home. All that is admirable, but everyone has already said, the CDC has already said, masks on someone with a beard like yours is useless. No, it's not. It is. It is not. You think your beard filters out COVID particles? My beard filters out herpes, <laughs> syphilis. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask how you know COVID. that. <laughs> Ed filters out everything. I don't even want to know how you know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got anything for me this week? I do. Tell me about taking pictures of a comet. Ooh. I don't know if I can do that. Because my next segment was going to be all about that. God damn it. All well, right, you know fine. what? Hang on. We can do the next segment with you. Okay. All right. Hang on a second. Don't say right. anything. All right. Because I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to set this up. All right. This is this is to be special. So hang on. All right. All right. Three, two, one. Welcome back, folks. This is the Hi. start. No, no, no. Do you jump the no. queue? No. No. Sorry. Welcome to the starting point for Dr. Segment. We're doing something silly tonight. Rather than having my lovely wife, Melissa Shield, join us in a little while, we've got a good friend, Jim Darrell, the Loop at loopinsight.com, joining us Hi. for this. Stop. stop wait. Jeez, oh, I did it again. <laughs> now, interestingly enough, we'd already planned on doing this, but Jim's question is ask your question, Jim. How do you take a photo of a comet? Excellent question, Jim. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, the have you seen the comet yet? No. Have you, you, you? So you haven't gone out just outside your door to see it? Not without my mask. Okay. I and mean, that covers my eyes because <laughs> my beard pushes it up. So no, you know, I have not. I, I have not. Do you know what direction the comet is going to be coming from? That you'll be, it'll, it'll be no. visible? No, but I assume I'll see it because I don't have a big tail behind no, it. No, 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 no. Okay, first thing, Jim, I want you to download an app called Star Map 3D Plus. Okay? Okay. And what Star Map 3D Plus will do is it will show on your um, iPhone screen where planetary things are. So you would just type in the I, name. I, I, I had that. I had that. Okay. I, I was I, I had a beta test of that. It's, it's so a, this this thing isn't going to hit the Earth. Or it is I mean, not. It, it, it will not get any closer to 100 million kilometers away. Okay. So you find that app, and yeah. anytime you'd like, even during the daytime, Go outside and, and, and have the app show you where the comet would be, even if it was daylight. And then you can sort of okay. get a sense of, oh, shit, there's a mountain in front of me, or it's behind me, or those kinds of things. So get a sense. This is what, this is what uh, photographers call scouting out your location. So you want to scout out to see where the best place is going to be for you to do this. You want to do this in the daytime because at nighttime it's hard to see. So it's hard to wander around in the dark trying to find a good spot. Now, you live very close to San Jose, California, correct? Correct. The next thing you want to do is go to a website called, uh, uh, oh, crap, I put it in the chat room. Hang on. Light Pollute, no, no. Uh, hang on, hang on. Just live with me. Lightpollutionmap.info. And what that will do is it will show you how much light pollution is in your general area. And it'll give you oh, an geez. idea of what, well, because the, the, the comet is very, very, very faint. This is not like the moon. It's not going to be you walk outside, boom, comet kind of thing. This is not like it is in the movies or anything, anything like that. This is a very, very faint so, thing. Yes. Well, I see Bruce Willis. No, because you don't have that good a telescope. You have to go to Hollywood for that. Okay. Smart ass. So I'm, I'm just doing a, a, a in light pollution map dot info. I, I'm having it look up San Jose. Come on. And what it's going to show me is where in your general neighborhood would it be e the easiest to get to some place that wasn't light polluted? Because if you're in the middle, if you're in downtown San Jose, you will not see this. There's just no way you'll you're you're going to be able to see it. So for you to get to some place. 
Um, you're looking at going to Mount Hamilton. Can you get to Mount Hamilton where you, from where you are? I don't know where that is. Lexington Hill sound familiar? Boulder Creek? No, no. Uh, Diablo Range? Okay, just, I'm going to hang up. On the highway between Fremont and Pleasanton? So you are in a very, very light polluted area. You're gonna have, you're gonna have a problem. Okay. So, so I'm not gonna get to see it. Let's you're probably not unless you're gonna I don't want to see it, I just want to take a picture of it. And, well, you, and according to all the movies I've seen, you just <laughs> look right. up and it's got a big tail hanging exactly. behind. It. That's right. Exactly. Well, the other thing is too, you are not gonna be able to take a picture of it because you've got an iPhone. Your iPhone will not be able to take a good picture, uh, uh, any picture of this. I, I'm willing to bet you, what? you have no ch- because the iPhone just. We've talked about this before. The the all uh, night for photo- all photography is about capturing light, and the bigger the opening in your camera to capture light, the better. Now your iPhone's got a very 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 tiny opening compared to a DSLR lens. So a DSLR lens can gather much, much more light in one shot than your iPhone can. Okay. The other thing is you you can't handhold a shot of the comet. You've got to have it on a tripod. You've got to have it on a long shutter. You've got to be able to manipulate the settings of your camera. And it's it's not possible to do that with the native camera app of the iPhone. I think that we should have a contest, you and I, who can take a better picture of this comet. We could do that. You could give that a try. What, what What are the stakes of this contest? Who wins what? Hmm. That's a good question. I think the, yeah. the, the winner sends the loser a picture of himself in a Speedo. Hmm. Because that's guaranteed to make both of us ill. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> So you have, to, you have to get some somewhere where you have a, a clear line of sight to where the comet is going to be. It's also late at night, around 11 o'clock at night, depending on when sunset is. But it's not at sunset. You're going to have to wait for about an hour, 90 minutes after sunset to go outside and look in that direction and see if yeah, there's... Yeah, but you forget, I have two times Zoom now with my iPhone, so... <laughs> That's right. That makes all the difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I completely forgot about that. So you're going to be looking to the northwest, and can you find the Big Dipper in your, in, in your sky? Yes, yes. Okay, good, yes, good, yes. perfect. So today is the 15th. The, the government hasn't gotten rid of that down here yet, but <laughs> That's they will. Right. Go out tonight, find the Big Dipper. Yeah. Do, 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 do you have binoculars? I, I, uh, no. All right, so you're, you're in deep but trouble. But I, I, have, I have the magnifier on my iPhone. <laughs> Again, that'll make all the, all the difference in the world. <laughs> so find the Big Dipper. It'll be pointing. Helps uh, helps with my restaurant. Exactly. Menu. I'll That's you right. Then. Yeah, no kidding. Me too. So find the dip, the Big Dipper, and it's going to be pointing down at about a 45-degree angle. Look to the end of the Big Dipper, the right side of the Big Dipper, and look down from there. Be, but half Top be, or bottom? The, the bottom of the Big Dipper. The, okay. The, 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 the bowl part. The far right hand yep. side on the bottom, and then look down about halfway between your horizon and that end of the Big Dipper. If you if it's dark enough and you've got a good enough lens, whether it be your iPhone, it's not, or a pair of binoculars, you'll see a very 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 faint smear in the sky. It'll have a little teeny tiny bright point on the left hand side, and then this smear going off in the distance, which is the comet's tail. It's an amazing sight if you can see it. But, yeah, you're not going to be able to take a picture of it with your iPhone. Sorry. So what is this uh, comet called? Comet Neowise. There's a big fancy name for it, but everyone's calling it Comet Neowise. It is a 6,000-year arc. It'll be back in 6,000 years. So go see it before it goes away. It'll be the closest to us at 103 million kilometers away on July 22nd, 23rd, that evening. Okay. So, so as long as you can see the Big Dipper, it's it's going to be below the Big Dipper. But halfway between your horizon and the Big Dipper. That'll be the easiest way to, to find it. All right. 
So you, so what, what you want right. to do is scout out the location in the daytime. I already did it in, in my neighborhood, and then just go with a pair of binoculars and go see it. Don't take your camera. No, I, I, no I'm just doing it with my iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just sent you my picture. That's that's what I see right now. You're lying. <laughs> no, I just sent you my picture. You're I, lying. I, I take a look at your text. Well. See, the problem is you and I are both in the same time zone, and it's sunny here. <laughs> no, it's not sunny here. It's dark. And there ain't no Take mountain like that in California. <laughs> <laughs> I just sent you. I just, <laughs> so I win. I win. <laughs> you took that with your iPhone, right? <laughs> yeah, with my iPhone. I'm sure it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> it was just racing across just the sky as you were talking. Just burning across the sky. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people think that. It's like, why isn't it moving? It's moving 100 million miles an hour, okay? Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So I win. Yeah, you do. You do. I'll, 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 you, you can send me that Speedo picture anytime you'd like. I will immediately go um, blind. <laughs> yeah. But no, what you actually need is a camera and a tripod and the ability to manipulate your settings on your, your camera. So you're Okay, have to so how did... How did can you show people that picture yes, that I just took? I will hang on. Apparently, second. that is um, the comment. How did somebody actually get that picture? Mm -hmm. I I know, I know, of course. I'm I'm just asking you <laughs> if you know. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did <laughs> just testing you? Uh, just testing to see you. if you know. Um, uh, how did I mean? That's a beautiful picture. Are you near your? Are, are you near your computer? No. Okay. When you do get a chance to look at that photo on your computer, I'm near my Heineken. You, yeah, yeah. Well, of course you are. But you, you, when you do get a chance to look at that photo on your computer, one of the things that will be very, very obvious when you look at that on the big on your big screen is you'll see a lot of grain a lot of noise a lot of speckled bits on it and what that tells me on that photo is that the photographer used a very very high iso and what that means is he made his um his made his camera very very light sensitive he's also okay. let it sit in one spot for i'm going to say with that level of brightness probably between 10 and 30 seconds so wow. his, his camera was on a tripod he opened so it he, up. So he pressed the button? No, he did not press the button. He would have used a remote oh. shutter. Because if you press the button, that physically moves your camera. You don't want to press the button. You want to do it uh, remotely. So he would have used either a remote trigger or a timer to have his camera go off without him actually having to push the top of the camera. Oof. So he's got it set up. He's going to have it um, um, focused on infinity. He's going to have his camera set up to manual focus and then he's going to f probably focus on that mountain off there in in the distance he's going to have vibration reduction turned off that's very important it's this weird weird little thing that says um, all cameras have varying degrees of vibration reduction but when you put your camera on a tripod you don't need vibration reduction so you turn that off and that way your camera will 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 remain stable now MacMan makes a good point. He said there are no star trails on this. You know what a star trail is, Jim? No. Star trail, you've, you've seen them. Is when you, when you take a picture of the sky and leave the shutter open for a very long period of time, and the stars start to circle around a central point. So you have to see the, like these light trails in the sky of, star, of stars. This picture doesn't have that. So what he's likely done is taken a bunch of photos, one after another, and then just... Uh, called stack them he's put them on top of each other in a, a piece of software to make it look this clean and crisp and bright so yeah this is this is not an iphone shot this is <laughs> this is this so is, how, is there any way for the average person let's say that uh we got a truckload full heineken and mac man and monty and i went out and we were trying to take a picture of this. Is there any way that we could actually take a picture of this? With iPhones? With what, whatever normal people would use. If, with, with, with an iPhone, no. 
But with a an average everyday DSLR, you can take pictures that are as good as this, if not even better, depending on your skill level. Just a regular Canon mm. Rebel TSI DSLR, yeah, you can take these pictures fairly easily once you know the camera settings. And the camera mm. settings are easy to set up. You just have to need to know how to change those buttons on your camera. It's simple matter of ISO 100, uh, focus to infinity, have your shutter speed set at 10 seconds, and your aperture is wide open as it can be, so aperture f3.5. And if you leave your camera sitting there for those 10 seconds, you're going to get decent shots, and with more experience and more more uh, software, you can get very, very good shots. Sorry, uh, Dave D. Um, uh, Dave D says, explain stack for the plebes. Monty says, multiple images layered on top of each other. It's an additive process. You So you add photos on top of each other to stack them up as if they were um, onion skins as in, a, in, a, in a cartoon drawing to make one clear image. That's probably what this guy did with this image. So is that faking it? No, not really, because he's taking the, the, the... Everyone's going to take their star photos, their comet photos, and increase the highlights, decrease the shadows, do m various manipulations. Now, if he took a picture and that mountain wasn't in it, and he later put the mountain in, that's faking it. There was a shot of uh, I saw um, last week of a guy who took a picture of the comet over Stonehenge. And everyone was like, oh, that's a fake picture. That's a fake picture because Stonehenge was in it. People didn't believe. But he, in fact, was at Stonehenge and did take a really cool photo of the, the comet going over, flying over, over Stonehenge. So it's, it's, mm. it, this stacking is, is, is not um, faking the shot. It's more along the lines of um, not manipulating. Manipulating it seems to be too, too strong a word, but certainly enhancing it to make it better. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, thank you, Jim, for being on our Starting Point Photography segment. This is one for the books. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? No, that's it. All right, folks. Thanks very much to Jim Dowerman of the Loop. And lo what? What? Well, what? You just clearing your throat there, buddy? Okay. I just coughed. Just Jim Dowerman did, did, did Jim Dalrymple of the Loop at LoopInsight.com. His podcast is the Dalrymple Report, done every week with Dave Mark of the Loop. Check it out on the iTunes Store. Thanks, Jim. Thanks a lot, Sean. Talk to you later, buddy. See you. Bye. <laughs> Completely hijacked my segment, and now Melissa's going to be mad at me. But uh, you know what? That happens. Um, when we come back, we want to uh, talk about uh, – I'm not sure now. We'll, we'll, figure, we'll figure something out. <laughs> this is your Mac. Welcome back, folks. Thank you very much for joining me here this Wednesday evening on the show, whether you're tuned in live or listening in via the archive. I, I, she doesn't know it yet, but Melissa's about to find out the bad news that um, we can't do a um, starting point photography segment because Jim took it over and, and he stole your thunder. I don't have any thunder. I don't have to. <laughs> well, then I'll go then. Bye, everyone. No, 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 no. no. This, the show is... Oh. The show is what? Nearly over. Yes, it is. But that doesn't mean that we, we, we still can't do stuff. Okay. I wanted to uh, talk about th this. This was a very funny... Um, oops, you're not in the right place. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. There she is. It's a very funny tweet somebody posted um, a couple weeks ago now. I haven't had a chance to talk about it. Uh, I would love to show someone from 1995 this picture and ask them what they think <laughs> what they think is happening here. Let me just see if I can't save this. This picture, so I can put it up in the feed, so that other people. No, of course not. We have to cover up Melissa's face. My apologies, sweetheart. I'm going to do this. 
Cover up your face. So I would love to show someone from 1995 this picture and see what and ask them what they think is happening here. I saw this picture. Oh, sorry. Hang on. I saw this picture and thought that would be wild. If you saw this in 1995, this is the kind of picture that would just blow your mind because there's so many questions. Why is she wearing a mask? What's that thing in her hand? <laughs> Why is she, she pointing that thing at her ice cream? Because remember... She won't be able to eat her ice cream because she has a mask on <laughs> for some unknown reason. That's right. Why is she pointing that thing at her ice cream? What is that thing doing? Because remember, in 1995, we really didn't have phones that took pictures. Oh, I've seen uh, something written along the lines of, you know, you sit down with a grandmother for us yeah. baby boomers and there's pictures of the family and... And the babies and the dogs and family picnics and Christmases. And soon it'll be that you'll sit down with your grandmother and it'll be pictures of her. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Why are all the pictures of you, <laughs> Grandma? <laughs> They're <laughs> selfies. Right. Hello, sweetie. That's right. All the pictures will not be nothing but selfies. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the pictures of your friends? You have to go to their Facebook feed <laughs> to see That's pictures right. of them. This is about me. I have no. Well, I mean... Now your friend, your friend Joe in in Katrina, is that right in mm -hmm, Australia? Mm -hmm. You guys were seem to be fairly prolific picture takers when you were younger, because she's you show me a bunch of pictures of you guys. Yeah. I have no, I have maybe three pictures of me before two thousand and seven when the iPhone came out. Mm -hmm. There were very very few pictures taken of me. I've got pictures of uh, me with my my dad and my um, brother, little brothers and sisters. That my obviously my stepmom took. I've got uh, uh, my high school graduation picture with the gigantic fro, and there might be one or two other photos. I didn't take pictures, and I didn't have pictures taken. What of What about me. your school pictures? We I never we never got those. I sat for them, but we never mom never paid for. Them. We couldn't afford them. No, but usually you'd just get a class one for free. No, we didn't get a class one for free. Well, maybe we did. Well, I just obviously don't have them anymore. Oh. But I mean, like right now, I could lay my hand on three photos of myself before 2007. Mm. Because they, I just didn't have them. And I'm not, I'm not bemoaning that or anything else like that. Just something I, just not something that we as a family did. We couldn't afford it to take to film pictures. And maybe mom kept a bunch of them, but I don't know she where they are. She probably did. She probably did. I, yeah, I don't and know they're they somewhere. Maybe they're, they're with your somewhere. sister or somewhere. But you and your friends still have those photos. You still have those hard copies of those, those Oh, photos. the photo albums are all at my brother's. No. I have some that, I have some photos, but no, there was a lot of photos. Yeah. It's easier to show them off online now. You know, it's easier to do a photo album online, but there's still something about sitting with somebody going through the photos hard copy. Mm. You know what I mean? You, you, if you and Joe and Katrina could sit there at a pub in Australia with those with those photo books, that'd be so much more fun than if the three you were sitting oh. there with an iPhone. Oh yes, no, that, you know that's I mean? a great loss for yeah, the next really generation is. or this this one. Yeah, no. I don't know if it's a loss if if you don't know what you lost. From the point, what I mean is that they they don't know. But they must, because their grandmother albums. probably still has those. Possibly, things. yeah, possibly. But yeah, I always, I, that that photo I cracked me up with what someone. In 1995, which is not that long ago, we're thinking about that about that photo. Yeah, it's got I find it so odd, you know. My f dear Linda in Australia as well, she takes a picture of her dinner every night, <laughs> and I can't. Sometimes it looks kind of like vomit. <laughs> well, you're and not I'll all dinners are for great. For tonight's dinner, and and I'm I'm just <laughs> why I find that very odd that people take pictures of. Of what they're eating. I think part of it is that people feel like they have to share something. And so this is that something. It's an easiest thing to think about. Yeah, I guess. I think part of our, the internet generation's problem is this this feeling that we have to share so much. Not everything. But we have to share a lot to let other people know that I'm doing something. Mm, it's a bit over. It is, yeah. It, it's it, an it, interesting it's, mentality. It, it really is. Got an email from our friend uh, Tom Reiser in uh, Minnesota. He says he finally got around to updating my donation. Thank you very much, so Tom. I appreciate that. He says, do you love the new shower thing? Love, all caps. I immediately had to check it out. It looks great. 
We've gone through a lot of different shower heads trying to find the right one. This looks like it might be it. Just looking for an opinion I trust. So do you love? I don't love it yet. And and it's and I'm it's a it's a you know weird thing. So you've got this extremely light uh, flow of water coming down, and you're thinking, how is this doing the job? <laughs> and even you know, like I cleanse my face in the shower every night, and you do this, and then when you lift it up to your face, you think, well, there's not enough there, yeah. but there actually is. It's distributed all over your hand. It doesn't come out in a puddle. And so you think, oh, I guess this is working. And as I said uh, the other week, it, it's rinsing my hair, which yep. is, and then I'm starting to get braver and use the wand a lot more. And I'm actually enjoying it very much now. And another thing is, is um, we live in a, a small house, a lovely small house. So when someone's having a shower now, you don't even know yeah, it. Yeah. It's silent, and I love that. Before it was like, you know, the shower. Was, well, Damon was couldn't shower yeah. while the show was on. Yeah. But it's very quiet. It does create a breeze in there. So you've just got to make sure you keep your shower. Um, we don't have a stall. Yeah. We have a shower curtain. I, and I don't want the shower curtain fondling me. It just No, <laughs> I've got to get in and make sure. And it's got weights on it, so we'll make sure that it's kind of... My trick away. is to take the shower head and tilt the shower head a little bit that way so water is running on the plastic uh, yeah, yeah. shower thing. Because, yeah, it's just the, 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 the air is coming through and billowing it up. Yes. <clears throat> I said to uh, Tom, I said, we're getting to love it. We'll have an update on Wednesday's show. Won't know for sure if we love it until we see a year's worth of water bills. I am I cannot see how the water bills won't go down. Yeah. Because you can see that we're using less water. Oh my gosh, it's it's beautiful. So you so getting used to it, getting used to sort of being misted, and then getting used to knowing that that mist has a lot of water in it. But oh no, how does it? Like it does. But they explained it when, <laughs> when we watched the um, Kickstarter yep. YouTube. For me, it's um, Melissa has a lot of hair. Damon has a lot of hair. Rory has a lot of hair. I don't. So if these guys go in the shower and someone neglects to clean out the little shower drain, the the hair gets in there and the water fills up in the tub. And there'd be times when I'd forget to empty it, or clean it out before I got in the shower, and I couldn't be bothered to do it while I was showering, so I just let it fill up, and water would rise up to my ankles, like past my ankles. So that's, you know... Six inches. I'm standing in six inches of water. It happened two nights ago when I had a shower. The water didn't, didn't get above my toes. No. So that's the less volume right less, there. We're just using less mm. water right there. Nothing else changed. I mean, yeah, the, what, maybe there wasn't as much hair as before or whatever. But still, the water, we're not, we're ob objectively, obviously not using as much water as we were before the, the, the day before we put this mm. thing up. Mm. So... If if the the biggest problem is that it's fairly expensive, you know, if, if this thing, when you can get a, a shower head for twenty five dollars, and this thing costs in Canada almost three hundred, that's a huge difference. Yeah. But if it cuts our water bill in half, it'll pay pay for itself oh, in three years. I mean, yeah, I'll be so happy to see that. So we'll keep our close eye on the water consumption change on the utility bill. Tom says, say hi to Melissa. You're so much better off with a caring female in your life, and she really seems like great people. Oh, thank you, thank Tom. You, Tom. Tom thank Reiser. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> uh, Bob, anyone know offhand if the Apple Store will accept old Mac computers for recycling? I looked around in the Apple pages, but it's not perfectly clear as whether they're accepting or your old Mac is tied in one way or another to the purchase of a new Apple device. First of all, uh, Bob, you can always call your local Apple store and ask them if, if they do it. Secondly, Apple does have a trade-in program where you can trade in for um, either credit or to the purchase of towards a, a new device. If your um, your Mac has no trade-in value, if it's a 10-year-old Mac, Apple will send you a box to recycle it. So Apple will take it off your hands. So, like I said, call the, your local Apple store, or you can get in contact with Apple, and uh, they will send you a box to, so you can completely recycle the thing. 
Edward, I'm looking for some advice. I need help to get on a Mac connection option. Uh, I need some help in connecting my iMac to my stereo system so I can listen to the music in another room where my stereo is. I'm retired and can't afford top of the line, but I can afford something reasonably priced. Uh, my Wi-Fi connection is at best iffy, so I have a hardwired connection to my modem and the wires running underneath the carpets. Not ideal, but I would prefer that to going through walls. Um, thanks for any pointers in advance. Edward, if you had a, um, I, I don't know if you do or not, but, but if you had an iPhone, you could have your uh, music on your iPhone and then uh, hardwire your iPhone to your stereo system. That's the easiest solution. It just, it's called a patch cable. It's, it's just a one eighth bit on either end. Melissa uses one for her iPhone to her little Bluetooth speaker for her her um, yoga practice, that's the easiest way to do it. The second easiest way to do it, I'm thinking, would be if you had an Apple TV. You could then airplay your music either from your iPhone or from your um, iMac to that stereo in another room. And thirdly, buying a Bluetooth receiver that matches with your stereo system would also work. So it's the same kind of Bluetooth connection you would use for anything else, but you would Bluetooth the music from your iMac to the Bluetooth receiver and then into your stereo system. Apple TV is a good choice, Monty says. If his iPhone still has a headphone jack on it, plug that into an auxiliary input on his stereo. So those are some options for you, Edward. Good luck with that. Hmm. Um, Bob, I'm asked, responding to a question from a senior. Um, do folks agree that she should turn down this offer from Comcast? Yes, yes, yes. If Comcast or your ISP offers you anything, turn it down. Just don't know. Just don't. Um, Comcast sent her a come on. It said, shield your devices against viruses and other online threats. Norton Security Online is included with your Xfinity Internet service. So when you connect, you get peace of mind knowing your personal information has protection. Yeah, don't use that stuff. It's, it's crap. It's shovelware. It's not going to do you any good. Um, if they're talking about it'll <laughs> protect you from viruses on your Mac, there are no viruses on your Mac, so I can protect you from viruses on your Mac. Send me $10 a month, and I guarantee you, you will not get a virus on your Mac. Um, yeah, turn it down. It's, it's, if you do want malware protection and other kind of things like that, then you can get that separately, and there's some free stuff. But I wouldn't use anything from my ISP because it's going to be crap software because they buy the Run cheapest. Away. Run away, Monty. Right. Run far, far away. Far, far away. Um, David says, uh, burning music for CD for my car. I want to duplicate a music CD so I can listen to it while driving. I tried burning the disc, but my car says it's a data disc and will not play it. What's the proper way to burn an audio CD? Thanks in advance. Okay, so when you um, burned it to disc, you took what are called AIFF files, which is the music files on your music CD, turn them into data and put that on your CD that you put in your car. Well, your car can't read data. It can only read audio files. So when you put it there as data, your car went, I don't know what this is. This is not AIFF. I don't know. I don't know. What you need to do is use a piece of software, whether it be iTunes or my personal favorite, Handbrake, free handbrake.fr and tell handbrake to take your music cd and turn it into aiff files or ideally mp3 files if you're not really picky about mp3 quality most people can't tell the difference between aiff files and mp3 files so if you're one of those people the other advantage of doing mp3 files is you can get if you've got a music cd that's got 17 songs on it and you burn it as another music CD, you've got 17 songs on two CDs. But if you take that music CD and burn it as an MP3, you can probably get 50 to 100 songs on that one CD that you can play in your car. So rather than just playing 17 songs in your car, you can play 100 songs in your car. So do that. Use Handbrake, turn it into an MP3 or AIFF file. Do you even have a, you don't even have a CD player in your car, do you? No. Do you have an ashtray? Mm, no. You have a cigarette lighter 
port, but not a cigarette lighter no. thing. Mm-mm. I wonder if any new cars have. I don't think they have any more ashtrays. I Maybe a bit more. I don't remember. Well, you're allowed to smoke in your car if you want to. <clears throat> you, you are allowed, but I don't remember seeing one of those in a car in a very, very long time. No, no ashtray. Just, just popped in my head. Mm. I want to say thanks as always to our good friend Jim Down for the Loop at LoopInsight.com for joining us here on this Wednesday evening. As always, thanks to you guys for being tuned in and asking questions. If you ever have any uh, tech support type questions or questions in general about anything we talk about, please send us emails to Sean at YourMacLifeShow.com. Until next week, as always, I've been Sean King. I'm Melissa King. And you've been listening to Your Mac Life. See ya. Bye. <laughs>